In this video we're going to look at how to install the CD-ROM into the computer system uh, with the CD-ROM being the um, slave to the hard drive. Okay, if we look at the back of the uh, CD-ROM now we can see that we've got the, um, the uh, power intake here uh, for the power cable and if we move along we've also got the 40-pin um, IDE connector very similar to the, uh, the way the hard drive layout is at the back of that. And also, if we move along a bit further, we've got um, the jumper setting, which uh, we can set as master, slave, uh, or a cable select as well. Now, if we uh, if we just turn this over, we we can get an idea of how we're going to set that by looking on the on on this particular drive. We should be able to see um, here. We can see we've got the options for master, slave, and also for the CS cable select. And if we just e e equate that down, we can see how that pin should be set for master slave or cable select on the uh, on the actual jumper selection. If we move along a little bit further we can also see uh, some um, outputs for um, uh, the music for uh, for outputting from the CD-ROM um, into the various sound cards on our uh, system. Okay what we need to uh, decide now is how we're going to set the jumpers on this um, CD-ROM uh, and we're, we're connecting this uh, CD-ROM to the same cable as the hard drive so it, it means that we need to uh, set this as a slave to the hard drive. Um, as we mentioned in the hard drive installation, the hard drive that's in the computer has the operating system on and that would need to be the master in the primary channel. Uh, therefore if we, if we add the uh, CD-ROM to the same channel it needs to become the slave. So uh, we can take, just check the jumper out of here. Uh, it's a good idea to, uh, to do this when the uh, CD-ROM drive is outside the case because it can be a bit awkward when you're inside. Uh, and you can see we've now set it to the uh, slave position and if we just want to verify that we can actually look um, onto this uh, outside of the case. We can see there we've got the slave position in the middle um, on the two middle uh, jumpers and if you look hopefully that should uh, be in the right position. Okay if we look at the front of the case we can see we've got these, uh, these plastic bays here uh, and if we take these out we can actually fit uh, CD-ROMs, DVD, DVD drives and DVD recorders etc. Um, but if you look at the bottom here we've got one that's already been taken out and that will enable us to put the, the CD-ROM straight into um, the uh, uh, computer case. If we, uh, if we take the, uh, the CD-ROM CD -ROM now we can actually uh, just put it straight into there um, and if we just wiggle it around it should start to uh, fit into the case. Okay. What we need to just be careful of is that uh, we, tr we align it up so that it looks like it's fitted properly and uh, that's nicely lined up now with those. Okay, now that we've got the, uh, the CD-ROM installed, we can see from inside the case um, where it just is situated uh, in relation to the hard drive. So it sits just usually just above um, the uh, hard drive. Now as I mentioned before that uh, the uh, CD-ROM is going to be um, a slave uh, to the hard drive uh, living um, on the same cable. Uh, we need to know where it's going to be positioned on that cable. Uh, so if you actually look at the, uh, the cable, again remembering we've got the, uh, the red line on one side of this cable um, and we also need to position it correctly into the uh, CD-ROM. Okay, if we, uh, if we take the cable uh, that we're going to uh, install the CD-ROM to, which obviously is connected to the uh, hard drive, uh, we can see that we've got um, midway down this cable we've got another connector, which is what we're going to uh, attach the CD-ROM to. So we're going to uh, install the CD-ROM cable into the CD-ROM now. And the ID cable just sort of slides in there. And that's nicely seated in there. And then uh, at the bottom of the cable, this piece here, this is the bit that's going to go into the uh, motherboard. So if we follow that cable now from the uh, hard drive, we can see that it comes from the hard drive to the middle connector which goes into the actual CD-ROM drive. And then from the CD-ROM drive, it's um, going to go into the motherboard which we'll install in a moment. Remembering that the pin 1 line, the red line, um, is uh, on the hard drive and on the CD-ROM is next to the power connector. Okay, if we look um, inside the um, um, computer now, we're looking at the motherboard and um, we can see here that we've got uh, the two um, IDE 40 pin connections on the motherboard, IDE 1, IDE 2 or primary and uh, the secondary channel. Now we've got the hard drive and the CD-ROM on the same cable. The hard drive is our uh, master and our uh, CD-ROM is our slave, both of which need to be on the primary channel now. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, 
install this um, ID cable into the uh, primary channel on the uh, motherboard. If we, uh, if we look now at the motherboard, the blue socket here on this, this board represents um, the primary channel. Now, it's not always the case, so it's a good idea to either refer to the manual of the motherboard or to have a close look on the actual motherboard itself. And you should be able to see uh, some uh, description on, on the actual uh, motherboard uh, plastic which says whether it's um, the primary or the secondary channel or it could be labelled as IDE1, IDE2. So we know that the on this particular board it's the, uh, the blue um, connector um, on the motherboard and we're going to just connect the, uh, the cable to that making sure we get the pin 1 the right way around by checking uh, again on the motherboard and we just fit that in nice and firmly there and there you can see the uh, hard drive CD-ROM um, showing the same cable on the primary channel okay when we're happy with the uh, cabling um, we just need to uh, secure the uh, CD-ROM into the case by uh, using the screws two on this side and then uh, two on the other side of the case as well if you want to check that the uh, installation has been successful uh, we can turn the machine on and then we can look at the, uh, the post screen and then if we actually go into the BIOS we can uh, just double check that the, uh, the, the installation has been successful and if we actually look here on this post screen we can see here that we've got um, the uh, primary master set as the IDE hard disk drive and uh, also the, uh, the slave on that primary channel um, is the CD-ROM and of course we've nothing, de nothing connected to the uh, secondary channel so that uh, comes up as not detected Okay, once uh, we're in the BIOS we can see that we've got the, uh, the primary master um, uh, as the uh, hard drive and if we look just down here we've got the CD-ROM um, in the uh, primary slave position uh, and once again we've got uh, the secondary channel, nothing uh, connected on there so it's not installed on either the master or the slave uh, positioning. Okay, that uh, concludes the um, installation um, of the CD-ROM and also uh, how to check that the CD-ROM installation has been successful uh, using the, uh, the post and the BIOS uh, uh, screens.